Good afternoon. I first like to thank Inderes really for organizing this evening. Uh, it's really interesting that we have so many companies in Finland and hopefully this will also promote the uh, born of other new companies because the invention area in Finland in the life sciences is really tremendous and we really should utilize that as, as a more, more common ways than we have done it in the past. I'm going to focus today on Farron's lead product, PEX Marilimap. We call it PEX, to just having a simple word for it. It's the leading macrophage checkpoint a inhibitor to control and reprogram the myeloid cells called monocytes or macrophages. The reason why we want to do this is to remove the immune suppressive elements from the patients who are suffering for the reason that has been caused by components in their system that has declined their immunity. To activate the immune reaction is extremely important, for example, for the cancer patients. And I'm going to share you uh, with our most decent recent data. And obviously, I also want to say that I will have uh, forward-looking statements, and this is my disclaimer for it. Uh, Faron is a dual-listed company at the moment. We are at the AIM, London AIM, and also here in Helsinki First North. Uh, the lead product, we do have two additional projects, uh, which we hope to get to the market. No, not to the clinic, clinical development next year, but I will not spend too much of time with those. Just due to the fact that the PEX is so exciting at the moment, and I do only have a limited time really to talk. We are not really limited to the company itself. We have extremely important a scientific network helping us really to look at the current mode of actions, but also to think about what the future will bring us. Because when you do clinical development and you move on from the animals into man, I can guarantee there are always surprises. And you can see some of these faces who are helping us at the moment. We have a science advisory board, but also a program specific advisor who are really helping us to build a right type of the protocols for our studies and then we apply them globally at the moment. And as you know, we are now really increasing our capacity on the US side. We have an office in Boston where we plan to build our regulatory, clinical and, and market uh, organization in near future years. We have three projects like I indicated, but the lead one is really this PEX Marilimap. We started with the solid tumors. Those are the tumors you all know. They could be called after the original organ, could be liver, brain, whatever. But we, very interestingly, we are also now dealing with the hematological malignancies, and those are really bad ones. Just to give an example, the myeloid acute leukemia kills 90% of the patients within the first five years. So something is really needed. People are often saying that you have to have unmet medical need, and in that case we can say that we do have unmet medical need because we really need to learn to control these immune suppressive elements. We normally need them, but they are exaggerated in the conditions like cancer. Uh, the trauma kind, which we have been aiming to really uh, target the acute in, uh, organ injury, including the lungs, we couldn't complete the corona control or corona related trial hibiscus in US, but we are more interested in really controlling the ischemic conditions. I'm pretty sure that we can announce something in the near future. And this third one, a uh, helping the bone marrow to recover from the conditions where there is a need really to stimulate the stem cells to start to produce the blood cells is really important one and hope to get that to the clinic as well. But let's move on to PEGS. We all know that the leading and most advanced uh, area of the cancer treatment is really to focus on our own immune system. The main mode of action today is to activate the existing T-cells. And I repeat this, existing T-cells. Those are the ones are trying to limit the cancer growth, but they have to be there in order to be activated. And that is done with uh, PD-1, PDL one blockade that then blocks these inhibitory activities the, the control system can uh, produce for these T-cells. They are selling uh, tremendously at the moment. The estimated sales this year is 36 billion, and estimated growth is really high. 
and most likely this year the lead product, uh, one of the US company, will be the most selling product, drug product in the world this year. The unfortunate thing is even they are treating some of the patients, approximately only 13% of the patients are helped with this treatment. So something is needed and there are plenty of people who believe it's really to remove the immune suppressive macrophages in order to get also the PD-1 treatment to become active. And that's our solution for the treatment. This is illustrating uh, the two phenotypes which we are reprogramming on top. You can see these macrophages which are now immune suppressive. They produce a signal that will generate hide me situation to the environment where they grow. So they go behind the immune barrier so that our immune system is not recognizing them. They also activate the regulatory T cells which are one of the components of this hiding signal. And by that way they can allow the tumor to grow and when it has grown big enough it can start to spreading and that's called metastasis. And that's normally the most risk uh, we can have in our system. By blocking the clever one you can see that on the top we reprogram these macrophages now become immune activators. They start to produce immune activating related uh, factors and they start to educate our immune system really to attack these cancer cells, recognize them and then activate the whole immunity. So now instead of hiding they are showing, presenting uh, the cancer cells that they are hiding in the system. And if that activation takes place we have much more hope really to get our immune system to attack the cancer. We have now treated more than 230 patients. We already know that we have shown the clinical benefit in our treatment treatment with the last line patients having no options anymore. We also know that we have well tolerated drug which is rather amazing among the cancer drugs. And we have also identified a factors, biomarkers, which can predict the outcome. And obviously this is extremely important for us in order to build up the next steps of the program for the PEGS. So we plan to go to the combination together with the single, single agent treatments and I will focus on those combinations today very much. So uh, as long as we do the data collection, there will be big companies more and more interested in that because this PD-1 uh, field is very competitive at the moment. There are almost 10 products ordered in the market and many of them are running out of their uh, IP uh, protection. And uh, that is the reason why they actually are looking for a combination with their own products and will be there. So what we have been able to show today is really that we can, inc uh, we can extend uh, the survival of the cancer patients who had no hope anymore. It's called overall survival. And if you look at our Matins data from that 230 patients, we have roughly uh, made 3.4 fold extension of their survival. And you can see this uh, from the left hand side. The one who respond on the red curve uh, have really 3.4 fold higher uh, extension of their survival. Even they all had the same progressive situation when they entered the trial. And I can see in comparison those who didn't respond, uh, that's the blue curve. On the right hand side you can see some of the biomarkers we have been able to identify. Interferon gamma being the most important one because that is directly telling if your immune system is activated or not. This is very important for us, this interferon gamma level, because we can now look at the situation where our patients who have low interferon gamma, and that is on the top, uh, on the right hand side picture, that's the same as I had in the previous slide, they do react to our treatment. So their immune system was silent and we can activate and that makes them respond uh, to, to cancer treatment with Pex Marilimab. And this is totally opposite with a PD-1 blockade and that's on the left hand side. If you have high interferon gamma level and that's the blue curve now, they are helped with the PD-1 treatment. But not the one that has a low interferon gamma treatment, meaning that their tumors are cold, their immune system is not activated and they let the tumor to grow. So just, you don't need too much of logic think that if you combine these treatments how helpful it actually could be to these patients. And the same is also shown here, the, the red curve showing again that we activate the interferon gamma production after a week or two 
and at the same time there's no real effect on the uh, uh, patients who actually already have a uh, activated immune system which is then PD-1 sensitive. So we believe that PEC is really igniting the immune system and that then help them to react to PD-1. We have some uh, example cohorts. This is a refractory melanoma, meaning that the patients have been uh, resistant to the PD-1 treatment. And the red curve, you can see after 12 months who had the response, they are still alive. And then you have the ones who didn't respond are dying and almost completely gone within the first 12 months of the treatment. You understand also why some of these trials take a bit time because we have to follow them uh, up to 12 months because that's usually the regu regulatory time point when the authorities look the outcome of these trials. So some, some people have been worried, are we kind of getting tired with trials? No, we just have to wait that all the patients really reach these, these milestones and we are getting there. So cold tumor. They have to be converted into hot tumor, meaning that our immune cells go in and start to attack the tumor. And then you combine that with the PD-1, with the maximal activation to these cells. Then you have a chance to treat those tumors. And there are plenty of these patients. Just think about only 13% of the current cancer patients get the help. How about if it doubled that, we increase from 13 to 26? Would that mean that we have a sane upside sales potential as the whole PD blockade because we are the leading uh, product at the moment. We have patent protection up to 2037 and obviously we are increasingly in discussion with a significant number of partners. This PEX Compo trial which is really trying to combine these and hopefully get started next year in the middle, you can see what the PD-1 blockade can do. It mainly focuses on activation of cytotoxic T cells. Those are the soldiers our immune system are using to attack the cancer. The PEX on top tells you that it activates the macrophages as I described. It activates the uh, antigen presentation. And if that antigen happens to be cancer antigen, then we have a T cells against the cancer. Then we have the whole uh, arsenal that actually didn't exist in us previously. And now combining this blockade, the lower column, you can see that we have almost maximal activation of our immune system. And this is why this makes so exciting really to initiate the trial. And we are first now heading to the head and neck cancer where the PD-1 blockade is probably most negative at the moment. There are two other ones, urothelia cancer as well. And then we also would like to go into the lung cancer. And then we have there already principal investigator run study in San Antonio at the moment. And obviously that data will serve our thinking as well when we move and advance. But then PEX map, we know that we have been up in the news recently. This is a very unusual a cancer. It's leukemia, meaning that the cancer cells migrate into our blood system. And if you look at the different stages of this acute myeloleukemia on the right hand side, the uh, red stain indicate that all those different variants we have from these leukemia cells are clever one positive. Now we have a cancer cells cell that actually carries clever one on their surfaces. I call these super cancer cells because now they are carrying their own immune suppressant. Wherever they go in us, they have their own capacity to immune suppress the environment. So think about, so if any T cells will come close to them, they have their own way to suppress that using clever one. Very smart. I, I wouldn't like to use the very clever, very smart. So uh, can we help these patients? We have now running a trial called PEX-MAP, where we went in uh, using a standard of care. And one of the standard of care is chemo treatment using azacetidine. We are now doing azacetidine combination with the increasing a dosing frequency, dosing level. We started one, one mix per kilo and now have moved to three mix per kilo. Will we ever do 10 mix per kilo? I don't know that yet because the results are already very exciting. 
Then the second uh, part of this trial is also to combine the PEX with acetazidine and with the venatolax, which is the most recent chemotherapy that has been provided for these patients. That is also the next step and I'm happy to also tell that we are really having patients in, in that category already at the moment. So what's really going on here? You can see it from this table. These are the patients we have now recruited. We have announced that we have a complete response, not yet complete a blood uh, values completely, but very positive results on that front as well. We have the second partial responder. This means that these cancer cells called blasts, which are normally measured in the blood and in the bone marrow aspirates, are disappearing. These are resistant patients from the previous treatments and blasts are disappearing. And look at the second on top. That patient even had a progressive a situation at the very beginning, then stabilized and then went to the partial response stage. And obviously we are going to continue this. And on the below you can see the recent uh, uh, new recruits. There's one tripled one and then already two patients now advancing with the three mx per kilo. So uh, really very, very interesting results. And then on top of it, I'm happy to share also this result, which our collaborator lab has produced very recently. So in the solid tumor front, we believe that we can activate the immune system, the myeloid cells that actually have migrated to the tumor, so that the microenvironment becomes immune activated and the whole immune system then can attack the tumor cells. Now, when we are dealing with the circulating uh, cancer cells, it's important to understand what happens to them. And our collaborating uh, group at the Medicity unit in Turku, Turku University, uh, Dr. Holman is running it, have shown that if you now provide PEX merilimab to these myeloid cells in ex vivo setting outside of us, you can actually see that it stops the oxidative phosphorylation of these cells. That is like uh, cutting off the gas tube because cells need a constant production of ATP. That is the energy they use to survive. And if they run out of it, they start to die. Their uh, process of dying is often visible and, and you can see a lot of debris. And if this is the way how PEXMAP can, PEX map can directly uh, influence on the cells, it's really interesting uh, situation. And just to summarize, we are targeting a extremely massive market. We definitely are first uh, pole position with the macrophase reprogramming product, entering a very interesting combination trials. And this is really what's going on the next year. And we all are really looking forward to analyze these data and we keep you informed while we advance with them. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to really answer to the next questions. Okay, thank you very much, Markku. Uh, let's start with the questions. So, in the Martins trial, you have mentioned that you are planning to discuss with the FDA on how to carry on with that that trial. Would you have any news for us on on the timing and uh, uh, views on 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 the Martins and discussions for next year? Yeah, we are really trying to get the package in uh, by the end of this year. And normally it takes 30 to 60 days when you get the initial feedback, you may get it even earlier. And this is a very thorough and, and, and data containing package because we really wanted to share that with FDA. Uh, there are a number of questions, we will uh, make them. Uh, one of them being also to ask what they think about our standalone uh, protocol designs, but also, also discuss with all these combinations. And we are very confident that the discussion will be extremely well received due to the fact that we really don't have any safety problem. It's so well tolerated that usually the regulators really encourage you to continue as fast as possible. Uh, it seems that your BEX-MAP trial that is looking at the bex map in, in blood cancer has rolled out according to your plans and you showed some new, new results from that. So. And you mentioned also that you may not even treat the patients with the highest 10 milligram per, per kilo dose. So 
how can we expect that study to continue and and do you have a good ke- guess on when the phase one would be finalized the advantage with with it's maybe bad word but but the fact is that the readout is coming really fast with these patients because the, the condition is so bad so that's helping us to analyze everything faster than with the solid tumor patients we are also looking at new sites on the US side and, and that will help us really to escalate the trial even further. Because if there's no safety problem, we can then start to look at the best cohorts and then move on. If you get this signal already at one mix per kilo every week dosing, and if that same we see with the three mix per kilo, uh, I have a feeling that there's no reason to go to the 10 mix per kilo. Because, you know, if you already and, and it's a regulatory understanding that you actually should use the lowest concentration where you see the efficacy, not the highest, because that is really a safety understanding from the regulators when you mm-hmm. speak with them. And Bexmab is a phase one to two trial, so please just remind us, uh, do you need a, a authorization approval to go to the phase two or can you flexibly it's already built in. It's already built in the protocol. Thanks. Okay, so th- and then you have a BEX combo trial, and this is a combination of BEX to PD-1 inhibitors, and this is a very first line. First line, yes. So it's a very exciting, exciting trial, and I think a lot of people are waiting for that to launch. And recently, when you you were, you were raising capital, you mentioned that it may begin in in Q1. So what is that uh, looking at now? It's, uh, I would say, H1 is 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 more safe to say and that may maybe a little bit depend on the feedback what the regulators think about it and and what also the key opinion leaders want us to do uh, as i indicated we are now targeting head and neck which is really area where there are very few responders for this pd1 if that is the case then we have to also look a sites which are specializing in those one so hope to get move on as as fast as possible but to, to provide a precise timing, it's always risky in this business. Yes, and finally, it may be difficult to answer, but I but I have to ask. So now you have funding to run approximately to the end of Q1, and you are planning to um, uh, make your make your R and D pipeline bigger next year. So it obviously includes funding, and there's been also discussion about uh, you talking to industrial partners. So is there anything you can you can inform about that? I can only say that we have several options at the moment, and, and that's that's the reason I'm really trusting that we actually can work it out. Uh, when and, and how we can actually announce everything, that is obviously something that has to be concluded by, by many of the partners and and pretty much informing as soon as we have that. So don't worry about it. Yep. It's it's in order. Good. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you.